Hello, welcome to another episode of eTraining Guides. Today we're going to be talking about Windows 11, uh, some of the features and how to do some uh, installation of Windows 11. Uh, so with that, let's get started. So I'm going to bring up a, I'm going to bring up an article. Let me just minimize that. Let me bring this over. All right, so we're going to talk about a few things today. Uh, first off, um, Microsoft um, Windows 11 was recently released. And so we have free options to uh, download Windows 11. You can also download the Installation 11 Assistant. Uh, this is the best option for installing Windows 11 on a device you're currently using. So you can download this option if you want to do like an upgrade. You can also do um, Windows 11 Installation Media, which will create... Um, a, uh, and uh, uh, you can download this version and it will create a um, and you can use a media creation tool to create a bootable USB or DVD uh, Windows 11 media so that's that one and then there's the uh, ISO so I downloaded the ISO because I'm going to create a VM for uh, 11 and um, so that's one that, that's the option we're going to go with and in another video, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in this video, but I'm going to show you how to create a uh, customizable WIM file and import that into SCTM. And then we're going to deploy Windows 11 um, using SCTM. So we'll see if we, if we get there today. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about, I remember when Microsoft, when they released Windows 10, they weren't going to be releasing another operating system. They'll only be releasing features. Well, now here we are with Windows 11. So... Um, so again, it's going to be uh, some some new features with Windows 11. Um, you'll be able to bring balance to your desktop. Uh, basically, it'll be easy to use tools that can help you optimize your screen space and maximize your productivity. And then you, it, it combines that with um, the Microsoft Office 365 subscription. And so, so that's kind of it's uh, combined with that. And then, of course, you have just uh, ways, different ways to connect. Uh, so with the Microsoft Teams, you'll be able to connect with anyone for free. Um, so you can do chat, you know, call, text, video right from your desktop or laptop. And so Teams is, I think Teams is going to be part of Windows 11. We're going to find out when we install it. You can basically, you know, connect to anyone uh, using Teams. Um, you can refocus your workflow um, by, by using PowerShell, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, PowerPoint, Microsoft Edge, Microsoft Teams apps will need to will work seamlessly through multiple devices and multi, uh, new multitasking tools like Snap Layouts, Desktop, and new more uh, intuitive redocking experience. So we're going to take a look at what that looks like. And of course, there'll be new gaming experience for those gamers out there. <clears throat> And the PC basically will adapt to you. Um, there are some requirements to, in, or, in order to run uh, Windows 11, so we'll get to that. And then it talks about how to get Windows 11 now. Now, Windows uh, compatibility. Um, there's also a PC Health Check app that you can run on your machine to see if it's compatible and can be upgraded to Windows 11. So there are some requirements to note. So we're going to go over those requirements right now. So with that... Um, the system requirements here, you need at least one gigahertz or faster with two or more cores, which I think is a little low for a 64-bit, so I would probably, uh, I mean, that's the minimum, you know, so you have to think about the, the performance of the lower, if you just meet the specs, it's probably not going to perform very well, so you'll probably want to just up it a little bit if you want better performance. So, um, so two gigs. Uh, one gigahertz and then of course four gigabytes of RAM so I would recommend probably upping that to eight gigs uh, just to get better performance and then you'll need a 64-bit uh, uh, or larger storage uh, you know at least 64 gigs of, of larger storage device um, so again you'll have to obviously you'll want more storage if you want to store apps and other things on there so, um, and then also system firmware, you'll need UEFI Secure Boot compatible. That system needs to be able to support that. If you have a much older system, it may not have um, that capability. Also, trusted platform module, 2.0 or greater. And then also, you, uh, if your system doesn't have that, it's, you know, um, 
it's not going to probably install. You might get an error. It might There might be some features that won't work because of that. And there's actually features within Windows 11 that actually uses that. And we'll get into that shortly. You want to have a graphics card that's at least um, compatible with Direct 12 or later um, with the WDDM 2.0 driver. So you want to have that. And you want to have a display that's high definition of 720p. So that's a minimum display. So you probably want to go with a 2... Um, uh, 2000, uh, anything can go to 1900 display resolution because of some other features in Windows 11 that actually uses that. So, uh, so again, but again, the minimum requirement for the basic stuff, but if you want to get into some of the features, it's going to, um, have more requirements. So with that, so here's some feature specific requirements that you'll need to, um, uh, be able to need to meet in order to, to use these features. So if you want 5G support, you'll need obviously a required 5G capable modem where available. Auto HDR, this is what I was talking about with the monitor being more better than the 720. Um, an HDR monitor, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna be much higher resolution than 720. But if you want the auto HDR, you'll need a monitor that supports HDR. A bit locker to go requires at least a USB flash drive available in Windows Pro. It's only available in the Windows Pro and above edition. So if you have Windows Home, BitLocker to go is not going to be available. So Client Hyper-V is also another um, feature that's available in Windows Pro, not in the Home edition. So keep that in mind if, you know, um, and most people that are using Home edition are not going to need to use the Pro features anyway. Um, so Cortana requires a microphone and a speaker and is currently available in Windows 11. And, it, and then for the Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and Mexico, and the United States. So those are the only areas where Windows uh, is available. I mean, the Cortana is available. And so if you have other um, other areas, not going to be available. And, and then, of course, if you want to take advantage of the direct storage feature, it requires an NVMe SSD drive. So if you have a spinning disk, you're not going to be able to take advantage of direct storage. So keep that in mind. Uh, Direct 12 is available with supported games and graphics chips. So you'll, you know, as I mentioned in that system requirements, it wants to Direct 12 if you want to take advantage of the gaming piece. And, um, and of course, multi-voice multi assistant requires a microphone and a speaker. So, uh, <clears throat> Snap, which is a three-column layout that requires a screen resolution. This is what I was talking about. 1920 effective pixels or greater in width. So, again, even though it said 2720, it's not going to be able to support Snap unless you have a higher screen resolution, which is right here I was talking about. Uh, mute, unmute from the taskbar required video camera, microphone, speaker, audio output. App must be compatible with the feature to enable global mute, unmute uh, scenarios. Uh, and then spatial sound requires supporting hardware and software, so you'll have to uh, do some research on that. But you'll need a sound card that will require that and also, um, yeah, so... Microsoft Teams requires video camera, microphone, speaker, audio output. Touchscreen, if you have a monitor that's touchscreen, you'll be able to, you'll take advantage of the touch feature. My monitor does not have a 4K monitor. It's not a touchscreen, so, but laptops um, usually have a touchscreen feature, so you have to make sure your laptop meets those requirements to be able to, um, then the two-factor authentication uh, requires a biometric fingerprint reader, and a lot of laptops do, like a lot of newer ones come with the fingerprint reader. And that fingerprint reader does require additional software to install in order just to, to just uh, um, you know just to use that. So again, if you're going to be using that, you'll need to have that. If your system does not have that, then obviously you won't be able to use that feature. Uh, voice typing requires PC with a microphone. A wake on voice requires a modern standby power model and uh, microphone, and then Wi-Fi six. Um, will be available. Uh, uh, Windows 10 will support Wi-Fi 6. Requires WLAN um, IHV hardware and a driver and a Windows Wi-Fi 6E compatible AP router. So you need to, if you don't, if you've not been upgraded to Wi-Fi 6, you'll need to do that if you want to take advantage of that. And that's true for anything. Uh, Windows Hello requires camera configured for rear, for near infrared uh, imaging, and or a fingerprint reader for biometric authentication. Devices without biometric sensors can use Windows, Windows Hello with a pin, but that's it. All right, so then the um, 
Windows projection requires a display adapter which supports Windows Display Driver Model WD WDDM 2.0 and Wi-Fi adapter that supports Wi-Fi Direct. So you'll have to, and then the Xbox apps. Um, so you'll it'll support the Xbox apps. You'll need a Windows Hello account or a li uh, Xbox Live account. Um, again, so some of the features that are depreciating and removals. So Cortana is no longer will be included in the first boot experience or pinned in the taskbar. Uh, um, the desktop wallpaper cannot be roamed to or from devices when signed in with your Microsoft account. Internet Explorer is going to be replaced with Microsoft Edge. So Internet Explorer will not be bundled in with the operating system like Windows 10. So it's going to be replaced by Windows, uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, management capabilities for organization to deliver customized Start and taskbar experiences are limited. Start, uh, start supports the ability to, uh, for organizations to overwrite the start layout, but does not support locking down the layout from user notification or user modification. Uh, taskbar pins and ordering can be controlled by organizations. So keep that in mind if you have uh, group policies that are, are controlling those type of um, components or features. Um, you have multi-app kiosk mode is not available. Windows not available. Windows 11 only supports the use of single app and key or and a kiosk mode. So keep that in mind. News and interests will be evolved. They'll be upgraded in a new. All right. So, um, okay. So search results from the internet. Windows 11 does not support disabling the return of internet search results via registry key. So. Uh, the related group policy setting is not impacted by this change. So if you have anything like that in place, keep that in mind. So there's been improved start menu. So we'll take a look at that when we install. The tablet mode has been removed and a new functionality and capability included in the keyboard attach and detach um, postures. Taskbar is changing. The timeline is removed. Uh, some similar functionality is available in Microsoft Edge. Um, and then the wallet's removed. And window deployment services is being partially depreciated. See um, results, so um, so we'll have to take a look at that. But we'll see how that goes. And that's basically it. Um, you had to install Windows 11 on the VMware, so you can see the Win 111 ISO file is there. Then you can see there's no Windows 11 listed there. As you can see, there's no Windows 11, so you'll have to pick Windows 10, 64-bit. So that's what we're going to do. You'll click on continue. You're going to click UFI uh, option there. You're not going to select the second option. Then you're going to customize settings, and I'm just going to type in Windows 11. So we're going to do that. Click on save. And then you're going to, we're going to change some settings here. So we're going to go um, add some more memory, because you remember it says 4 gigs of RAM. So we're going to change it to 4 gigs here. And then we're going to go and then check the process. So that should be good. Um, then we're going to, uh, I'm going to deselect this because I don't think I need this at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. Even though this says Direct 11, Direct X 11, so I'm going to turn that off. And then um, we're going to, uh, and we're, gonna change, we're just going to bridge it for now. I can add it to my lab later. So I'll do that later. So let's add some more space. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's give it, uh, let's just 120. That should be enough. Now my um, machine has um, uh, as NVMe SSD, so this will work. You also want to turn off disable side channel migrations. So you want to turn that off. And that should do it. Oh, then you want to add a device. So we're going to go ahead and add the trusted platform modules. You saw that it was a uh, requirement. So we're going to do that here. Uh, oh, we need to um, encrypt it first. So let's do that. So we're going to encrypt it. Enable encryption. We're going to enable it. There we go. And you can put in your password. And then we're going to verify it. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add device. And this time you had trusted. There you go. This time I'm going to let you add it, but you have to encrypt it first. Add. Okay, show all. 
And you'll see right there, trust the platform module because that's a requirement. All right. So now we're going to do the install. There we go. You can see the Windows uh, splash screen is uh, displayed. Click on next. Click on install now. And I'm going to put in my CD key. Now, once I put in the CD key, now at this point, if you have, if this machine does not support the minimum requirements for Windows 11, you will get an error. You will not get to this next screen. You'll get an error instead. So since my machine does meet all the requirements, there's the reason I see this uh, license terms. So you just click on accept the license term and then click on next. So go ahead and click on next once you've uh, clicked on that. And then do custom. Next. And that's it. All right, so here we go. It's going to just a moment. So this is what it looks like when you when you first see. Now it's going to go through the setup wizard. You can select the different things. So I'm going to select the United States because that's where I'm at. And of course, U.S. layout. And skip this. I don't want to add a second. You can if you want to, but I'm going to skip it. If you have like a numeric key or whatever, you can do that. My keyboard has a has a numeric part built into it. It's not a separate uh, separate keypad for the numeric keyboard. Now it's checking for updates. It's going to do that. And then it's going to make sure you have the latest. All right. So now we can name our PC. So I'm just going to call it Win 11. Active Directory, when you do add it to domain, so make sure your name is 15 characters or less. Um, and then, of course, uh, no spaces or any of the following special characters. So just keep that in mind. But at least it gives you the information here. So I'm going to say next, but that's what I'm going to call it. All right, so here's um, your options. You can set it for personal use. You'll have to use your Microsoft account for that and or set up for work and school, you'll have to, um, we'll to get access to your organization, resources, email, network, apps, what have you. So I'm going to do this one because I'm going to add it to the domain at some point. Probably not going to do it today, but we'll see. I don't have my other. I on sign in with other options rather than using the uh, my account. So I'm going to go domain join instead. Um, All right, so I've answered my security questions. Um, I guess you can turn these things on if you want. Uh, you can always learn more about this. I'm just going to leave the default for now. Um, okay, it's fine. And okay, I'm just going to leave the default. I can always uh, configure that later if I want to. I was going to check for updates. I went through and checked my updates. Now it's getting things ready. And here you go. This is what the uh, desktop looks like. You can see all of the different things that are pinned. And uh, this is what comes up. Uh, you got your TikTok, your Instagram, Facebook, cal calculator, your Disney. Um, now a lot of some of these things probably will get controlled by your um, organization to not have people <laughs> watching Disney Plus and your Xbox games and stuff like that. Um, and of course, I'm joined to my domain. Um, so that's basically it. So you have, and then you have your little taskbar, which is different. You notice there's no start button anymore. They kind of made that mistake with Windows um, 8 when that first came out. They took away the start button. So, um, so yeah. So here's your power button to turn it off. You got your. Um, there's your little app control panel. Um, your widgets. Your teams, yeah, so teams is built in. So I suspected that, I suspected that would be built in. There's a teams chat, your Edge, your Apple Store, 
Um, so these are things, and then your search bar, if you want to search the web, apps. So it's a whole brand new experience. Um, so yeah, so this is, and then your apps. Here's your apps, your settings, your performance, your documents are all in here. Web stuff, you know, like if you went to any websites or what have you. More folders, music, videos. You can click on here. Um, here's your file explorer. So here's your way to. Um, so yeah, there's no start button. So this is all going to be interesting. But if I, you know, that's I need to minimize that. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. Click on this. Uh, sign in with your Microsoft account for Edge. There you go. System. Here's your 365, the OneDrive, Windows updates. Let's see. Um, yeah, there's a whole. Yeah, this is the whole redesign of the operating system accounts. This is the account you logged in. I'm logged in as a local administrator account. Um, I'm going to have to rename the computer, uh, what I want to name it. So I'll have to redo that, but I'm not going to do that in the video. So this is a quick little um, overview of what it looks like, what you're going to expect when you um, install Windows 11. And so, and there's your Windows updates. See, I just no start button. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. No control panel. Um, you know what we're used to? We're used to the control panel. There's a new desktop. You got desktop one. You get multiple desktops if you wanted to add some desktops. Here's your kind of your control panel. Let's see. We got apps. We got, uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Since IT people are so used to control panel. Let me see if I uh, do a, uh, oh, there it is. There we go. That's how you get to control panel. Um, let's see, system. Uh, this is device C. It's in my device name, so that, but that's not the name it created it. It's not the name it created. All right, so that's basically it. And here's your um, Pro, because I got the Pro and the version. It's on there. This is Windows 11. And then, of course, you have your um, related link, domain, work group, system projection. There's your system project protection, advanced system settings. Uh, so, yeah, you'll have to kind of play around with this. Let me know what you guys think of Windows 11, um, if you had a chance to play around with it. Right now, it's on a work group, so it's not even on the domain. Uh, so, it's in a work group, so I can change it right here. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, getting around, it's going to be a little different getting used to, but, uh, um, all right, so we are going to do, I'll do this later. I don't need to play with this now. But anyway, um, so there's your apps, all your stuff. Let's get to it. Uh, that's basically it. So let me know what you guys think of Windows 11, if you had a chance to install it and play around with it. Um, and of course, all of the things that are included in the app, you'll probably, I'll probably in the next video go over like group policies, things that you can manage, um, you know, in the pin section. Although I don't think it's going to be modifiable as it said in the article. But again, I'll leave all the articles in the, in the uh, below. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you if, if you found it helpful. Subscribe because there's going to be a lot more Windows 11 content coming your way. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.